Hi everyone, welcome sa channel natin. Ako nga pala si Janos na Pinotech Dad. Today, pag-usapan natin sa wakas yung mga phones na dapat abangan in 2023. Actually, these are phones na excited ako na ma-review and hopefully, magamit natin dito sa channel mismo. So, sisimula natin with the flagship level phones. Of course, these are the more expensive phones talaga with all the bells and whistles sa mga features nila. So, number one on my list is the Samsung S23 Ultra that's rumored to be coming out or launching in February 1. Actually, hindi siya rumor na kasi may mga invites na talaga para sa launch event. So, I'm excited to see what they bring para sa S23 Ultra. To be honest with you guys, I was also excited from last year's S22 Ultra with the S Pen. Pero maraming beses ako nag-hesitate to get it because... Number one, it was super expensive. And number two, naka Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 siya. So, ilang beses ko talaga pinag-isipan. Kukunin ko ba? Kaso naka Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. If you don't know the backstory to that, it means pag naka Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 kasi usually hindi ganun kaganda yung thermals. So, para sa mga nagre-request na magkaroon din sana tayo ng coverage for the S series ng Galaxy phones ng Samsung, well, I'm gonna be getting the S23 Ultra. Now, worried lang ako ng konti dahil sabi nila it will have the highest clock speed na Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 among all the rest that came out so far. So, nakakabahala kasi baka naman masyadong mainit. Fingers crossed, sana hindi ganun. Now, number two on my list is something that's already in my hand. And that is the Xiaomi 13 Pro. So, the 13 series is something that you need to look forward to, lalo na sa global release ito. It has the MIUI 14, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and it has the Leica branding finally para sa global market dahil lumabas lang to last year sa China. So, if you finally want to dip your toes sa hype ng Leica and Xiaomi partnership, this is the first time that you will experience it in the global scene. And if you want to check out sample photos ng Xiaomi 13 Pro, nandun po yun sa Facebook page natin na Pinoy Tech Dad. So, I would highly suggest na i-follow nyo yung page ko para updated kayo sa mga ganong klaseng post. Pangatlo sa listahan natin is the Vivo X90 series. So, last year, hindi ko naman na-review talaga yung X80 Pro. Actually, nahawakan ko siya na test ko siya for a few days but it wasn't enough for me to give out my full review so, hindi ko na lang tinapos yung video, but I really enjoyed using it. So, hopefully, matest na natin for real yung X90 series once it comes out here sa Philippines. So, hindi kayo aware guys, ito talaga yung top of the line na camera phone ng Vivo. So, tingnan natin kung ano yung kayang ibuga ng X90 series if we ever get a hold of it. If you're looking for a phone na talagang camera-centric, one of the best choices yan para sa 2023. But speaking of a camera-centric phone, dahil na-experience ko yung Huawei Mate 50 Pro last year, I am so looking forward to experiencing the Mate 60 Pro for this year. Yes, <laughs> kakalabas lang ng Mate 50 Pro, but I'm already excited para sa Mate 60 Pro. And hopefully, magkaroon tayo ng chance na matest yan ng mas matagal para naman magkaroon tayo ng napakaraming photo and video samples na pwedeng i-post dun sa page natin. But what I'm really hoping for guys para sa Huawei in general is that sana mahanapan nila ng way para ma-activate na nila yung 5G sa mga phones nila. Kasi sayang yung mga chipsets like the Snapdragon 778G Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 kung hindi naman naka-activate yung 5G band. So, hopefully, that happens for Huawei this year and sana magkaroon ng workaround para magamit na nila natively yung mga Google services. So, we'll see what developments happen in 2023 para sa Huawei. And of course, I always save these two for the last pagdating sa mga ganitong kind of list kasi ito na yung parang every year talaga inaabangan natin 
na merong release ng Pixel phones and the iPhone from Apple. So, yung dalawang phones na yan, inaabangan ko kung ano yung pwede pa nilang improve sa cameras nila in terms of video and photo capabilities. Lalong lalo na para sa Pixel 8. I'm wondering if they will finally improve the sensor that they're using kasi they've been using the same sensor for a few years now. Curious talaga ako kung ano magiging decision nila sa gagamitin nila na sensor for the Pixel 8 series. Para naman sa iPhone fans, supposedly magkakaroon na ng dynamic island all across the board sa lahat ng models ng iPhone for this year. So, tingnan natin sa iPhone 15 series kung totoo nga ba yan. Na kung sakali man totoo yung rumors na yun, well, it's not really that big of a deal kasi if I'm being honest, yung dynamic island ng iPhone 14 Pro ko, it's not that big of a deal then dahil it's a little bit gimmicky, it's useful in some instances, but it's not something that I would consider getting an iPhone 4. So that's about it para sa mga flagship phones na inaabangan ko for 2023. Now some of you might have noticed na hindi ko binanggit yung OnePlus and that's because, to be honest with you guys, hindi naman talaga ako excited sa OnePlus na flagship phones kasi they've been a little bit underwhelming since OnePlus 9. Yung partnership nila with Hasselblad hasn't really resulted into anything significant sa camera segment ng mga phones. So, tingnan natin kung ano yung kayang ibuga ng OnePlus 11 series for this year and maybe we'll go from there. Tingnan natin kung interesting nga ba silang i-review dito sa channel. But if there's anything OnePlus that we need to look out for, yan yung mid-range segment nila. And that's because of the success of the OnePlus Ace from last year. So, ano kaya ang magiging successor ng OnePlus Ace for this year, 2023? Three, will it be something as successful as the OnePlus Ace? I highly doubt that kasi kakaiba yun eh. Parang yung Poco F3 ng 2021 that was groundbreaking in terms of overall value. So that is what I see sa OnePlus Ace from last year. So it's gonna be hard to top that pero I'm still looking forward kung ano yung pwedeng ilabas ni OnePlus that will be a successor to the OnePlus A. So, aabangan ko yan, number one sa mid-range list ko. Number two naman sa mid-range list ko na inaabangan ko is the successor to the Poco X4 GT. So, the X5 GT, hopefully it comes out and be a better version of the X4 GT. Kasi ganun yung trend so far. Yung X4 GT was a better version of the X3 GT. So, will the X5 GT be a better version of the X4 GT? That is something that we'll find out in a few months. So, yung successor ng Poco X4 GT, yan po yung number 2 sa list na inaabangan ko para sa mid-range phones. Next naman na abangan natin yung Realme GT Neo 5. Yung GT Neo 3 was really good as well. So, kaabang-abang din itong Realme GT Neo 5 with a 240 watts of fast charging <laughs> intense. Akala ko sobrang bilis na ng 150 and then nagkaroon ng 200 and now we'll have 240. Pero bukod pa doon, of course, the performance is what we're gonna be looking at pagdating sa Realme GT Neo 5 dahil yun rin naman yung number one para sa Realme GT Neo 3, yung Dimensity 8100 nila. Napakalakas for the price that you're gonna be paying for it. So hopefully, ganun rin kaganda yung presyo ng Realme GT Neo 5. Next naman, isa sa pinaka inaabangan ko is the Techno Phantom 2. I know, medyo nasa flagship range na yung kakayahan nito, pero I think they're gonna be pricing it na malapit sa mid-range pa rin. So, this is something that I'm looking forward to. Sana dalhin nila dito sa Philippines kahit na medyo limited yung numbers but hopefully maging available pa rin para makabili tayo and matry natin mismo yung kakayahan ng Tecno sa paggawa ng medyo higher end na phone. So hindi na po ito yung Tecno na nakasanayan natin na merong Helio GX series na ginagamit as their chipset. This one is finally using a Dimensity chipset na napakalakas and hopefully it's something that performs really well as well as yung camera. So I'm excited to check that out. 
if ever it comes here sa Philippines. And of course, nandiyan rin yung kapatid ng Tecno, yung Infinix. I'm sure marami rin silang mga ibubuga na napakagandang mid-range phones that we have yet to see. And panghuli naman sa listahan ko, yung Redmi Note 12 Pro Series na global version. Hopefully, this will be the Redemption Series para sa Redmi dahil last year super disappointing talaga yung global version nila for the Redmi Note 11 Pro na merong Snapdragon 695. Now, I'm crossing my fingers na yung Redmi Note 12 Pro will have the Dimensity 1080 as well. Sana hindi nila baguhin yung chipset nun. And finally, meron na tayong Sony IMX766 para sa mid-range device na medyo mas affordable compared to the flagship level phones na may Sony IMX766. So, I'm looking forward to that. Let's all cross our fingers na kung ano man yung specs dun sa China, hindi nila baguhin pagdating sa global market. Now, para naman sa entry-level phones, the usual suspects pa rin, nandiyan yung Tecno, Infinix, and the Poco line na lagi nagbibigay sa atin ng mga good value phones under 10,000 pesos. So, tingnan natin kung ano pa yung mga ilalabas nila for this year. But I'm hoping in 2023, itigilan na nila yung pagre-recycle ng mga chipsets like the Helio G96, G99, G95. Stop it! Get some help! Move on na tayo and gumamit na tayo ng Dimensity chipset or with a more affordable Snapdragon series na chipsets. Now, para naman sa flip phones and foldable phones, I'm not really looking forward to any of those yet because I know they're still gonna be super expensive for 2023. Maybe in a couple more years, eh, medyo mas mababa na impression ng mga yan. So, it's not on my list. Pero kung nasa list nyo man yan, hey, no judgments here. Okay lang yon na inaabangan nyo yung mga flip phones. Now, what about you guys? I wanna find out kung ano yung mga inaabangan yung phones for 2023. Pareho nga ba tayo ng mga inaabangan na phones? Or meron pa kayong mga phones na inaabangan na hindi ko napanggit? Let me know in the comment section. I want to read all of your comments. And para sa may mga katanungan, let me know in the comment section lang din as well. And I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Anyway, kung gusto mo pang manood ng mga videos ko, meron po akong mga ililink dyan. I'm sure magugustuhan nyo yan. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo.